Hey everybody, welcome back to the eBay shop. My name's Corey. I'm Teresa. And we are Grams and Pops Vintage, and today we're gonna to talk about all kinds of different stuff. Probably the main topic being offers. Yes, we don't we, agree. We do not agree on offers. <laughs> so we're each gonna state our case for you, and you guys decide how you feel about it, and you <laughs> let us know. So we're gonna talk about that in a minute. We do have some things that need to sell and go out. We have quite a few sales today. We do. We we do. We're only going to go over about 10 like we usually do, but we'll talk about some of another big sale we just had yep. as well. So what's the first sale we had? We sold a video now. It is like a kid's movie portable system. So it has a screen on it and you put these little DVDs in it. Are they really supposed to watch TV on that little screen? Yeah. What kid needs to watch it on a gigantic screen when they're in the privacy of their bedroom or their living room with headphones i don't know that's a tiny screen for a video but that's what it is, it is. a color person video now color personal video player it also has eight discs with it i don't know i would need to update my glasses to watch on that tv so we're, and we're gonna sold. call that a not a widescreen tv that's my blue one i do still have a red one so if anybody's interested in it for their kids i have the red one still um, that sold for $35 plus shipping. Yep, there it is. And I got them both for 10 bucks. Okay, and then remember a couple videos back, I bought a whole bunch of shoes. Like 27 pairs of shoes. Yeah, too many I shoes. I sold a couple pair, including this one, which these are Timberland Men's Premium Waterproof Oxford Style Wheat New Buck Shoes. Yep. Boots, not shoes. They're Timberlands, but they're like low top. They're not, they don't come up. <laughs> Me like, rise. Usually the Timberland <laughs> boots I see are like, they're taller. Yep. These are, these are short. So yep. not a lot of, not basketball mm -hmm. shoes. Not a lot of ankle support there. Those sold for full price of $89.99. Yep. And, and they're, they're like, they're, they're brand new. Yeah, they those are, are in amazing shape. Like there's not even any scuffs on them, so. No. All right, we got another sticker feature. Let's go see who we got. Let's go. All right. Oh. That was bad. I just yeah, killed the donkey. Killed the donkey. The donkey is Sticker Mule. We got a couple of theirs. Me too. And we have them because that's who we order our stickers through. If you're looking to get stickers, now the design we had to make and send in, but if you're looking to have sticker made, Sticker Mule's a really good company. We order like a thousand at a time. We do. And if you like hot sauce, they send you, they a, free send you a bottle of hot, of hot sauce. sauce every time you yep. order. Even though we requested not to because we don't need hot sauce, but... Yeah, it's, it's weird. I don't know why they send hot sauce, but they do do really good quality stickers. So shout out to Sticker Mule. All right, so the first topic of today is, is kind of a weird topic. It's not really even a topic, I guess. But we went to a family run estate sale, which is our favorite kind. When yes. there's not an estate sale company involved, the family is always willing to deal and they're actually trying to get rid of the stuff. The hard pieces of those ones though, is nothing's ever marked it's like make a pile and we'll deal on it yep we usually test the waters we'll grab a few items and we'll ask yep and, and we, we did what kinda, did we get we can kind of judge pricing based on that we got that whole bag of like ornaments and what do they call us bubble lights bubble yep. christmas lights yep and a uh what do you call that thing i don't know what that you're doing <laughs> it's a an official's shirt from a race from a like a racetrack oh, yeah it, it has all kinds of patches like coors yep. and budweiser whatever else is on it old it's Milwaukee. got a whole bunch of it has a skull patch on it like an old racing shirt yep so we kind of bundled that up in a small bundle we got a price and it gave us an idea that they were pretty cheap mm -hmm. uh, but we started going through the sale we bought quite a bit there which we won't talk about all of that I, no we did we did fill a bunch of well, not fill the car, but we filled the back seat yep. pretty good with stuff there at really good prices. But when we went there, there was there was a lot of people there, but most of them were like families and friends right from the area. Yep. They didn't really advertise the sale any. They, they did ask how we saw it, and I had downloaded the yard sale treasure map, and that's how I found it on there. So I don't know who added it on there. Which you would think was a good thing, but in this area, like nobody uses no. that. No. Like you don't find garage sales on there very often. Like literally hardly anyone uses that around here because it's such a small rural area. Yep. Most people use Facebook, Craigslist, local papers, things like that. Yep. So we were chatting with one of the ladies and she's like, oh, well, I've tried to post it on Facebook, but nobody's approved it. 
So I, I don't know how to get it out there any better. Any better. Yeah, she wasn't part of any of the garage sale groups or anything like that. They were having trouble getting the word out. Yep. And Teresa being the kind of person that never passes up somebody where she can... Help? Well, that's the nice way to say it. You... I was helping! <laughs> no, she, so, she was. She was trying to help them get it out there. Yep, after we paid for our last items, put them in the truck, I went back in and talked to the lady that was inside because she said that she was looking for the, the flyer that they had made, but we couldn't find it. So I gave her my phone number. She texted me a picture of the flyer, and I went out and posted spam the right everywhere. word. Yeah, she posted <laughs> it in all the garage sale groups and stuff. So, we'll have to remember to take it off today. Oh, yeah, because it was done. It was actually done Saturday. Yep. So, so I'll have to go in and take it off. But, but that was a really cool sale, and it was for the family. And, and we they gave us some really good deals, so we didn't mind helping them mm -mm. spread the word. Especially since we had already been there. Like, we got the things we wanted. They yep. had some really cool stuff out there. It was a whole, like, farm acreage. It was, like, five buildings worth of stuff. It was. The hard so. piece was is one of the last sales that we bought was some Pyrex. <laughs> yeah, they, they were... They did look up their Pyrex and they were pretty proud of it, which we had to haggle a little bit. I, I almost felt bad haggling with them at an estate. You could tell there was a little bit of an emotional connection to it and they wanted to get top dollar out of it. And we just weren't. And I was totally okay with leaving it because I didn't, I don't like buying glass anyway. Yeah, and then she dropped down a little bit. So yeah, we still got a good deal on it. I mean, she worked with us. She did. So yeah, we helped. We helped spread the word of a garage sale. I did. Now I got to remember to go in and delete all those posts yep. in all of those groups. All right. So what's old next? So we went to our little... It's a little mission thrift shop yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, it's called Padres. And they had a whole bunch of baseball cleats, softball cleats, like whatever. kids. Yes. And adults. Oh, the I adult ones were, were some football. adults in there. But I grabbed a bunch of them. They were a buck a, a, buck a pair. So I grabbed these ones. They are Adidas Youth Speed Flow turquoise purple oh those are soccer cleats like they're i don't think they were ever worn no like they are so clean and we grabbed three or four pairs yep and i paid a buck for it yep a buck a pair that's the shoe right there well there's two of these i paid 40 or they paid not i paid i paid a buck they paid 43 dollars and 99 cents plus shipping yep so apparently kids cleats who knew yep okay so out of a lot of Littlest Pet Shop, I have started lotting them up and whatnot. I found all of these. They're called Teensy Pets. Cause you say one, not a lot. Shut up. We should get a link. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even think about that. So anyways. Any who's. I got these teeny tiny little LPS things, Littlest Pet Shop. And there are 31 of them in there. Yep. So they look, they look like this. They're just... They look like the micro machines of Littlest Pet Shop. Be cool. That's what they are. Well, they're not actually micro machines. They're called Teensies. Teensy Weensies. Yep. So there are 31 of them in there. And they sold for $54.99 plus shipping. Yep. So don't don't overlook the small stuff. Shut up, Teresa. <laughs> All right. So this is where we definitely don't agree we most don't. times. Offers. When we get offers in... No, you got to start from the beginning. <laughs> got to start from the beginning. So. Well, it doesn't have to be a long story. No. When we post items for sale, we add offers. We do. On everything. I put a minimum offer on everything I list. And I'm not a fan of that because even if they come in at a dollar and it's a $200 item, mm -hmm. I want to be able to counter offer. At least the conversation has started to where you have an opportunity to counter offer. You never know what's going to turn into a sale. Mm. I mean, how mm, many times mm, at a garage mm. sale have people said, well, I don't know, tell me what you think. And I'm like a dollar. And it's obviously a much more expensive item. And they counter and it turns into a sale. I'm struggle bussing. Am I changing your mind? <laughs> no. <laughs> but here's my deal is if you come in, if, if I, so for example, Corey listed a $250 hat the other day, 245 bucks. Somebody came in because I didn't list it. So there's no minimum offer I didn't on put it. A minimum. <laughs> um, I might change my minimum offer now. I might agree to that. Just, why? It's extra work. Just leave it off. No, it's not. Here's, here's the, I, and I'm not trying to be mean. You are. I'm not. I'm so not trying to be mean. <laughs> 
you guys have heard the term like RBF, right? Like resting bitch face. Teresa has a resting bitch response. <laughs> <laughs> like, like immediately. If somebody RBR? sends, <laughs> if somebody sends a low ball offer, she's immediately angry and she doesn't even want to counter. Like she's just. No, I do too mad. counter. Yeah. But how many times have you been like storming through the house complaining and, and I'm like, just <laughs> counter. I do counter. I just get frustrated because <laughs> you list it for what it's worth. I mean, and like we said in previous videos, we don't list at the top of the market. I don't list directly at the bottom of the market. I list just above the bottom of the market. I typically. always list at the bottom of the market. I'm in between. With exceptions. If there's somebody that's just way below the market, yes, I yes. don't go down there. But the bottom of the going market is where... We pretty much list most of the but time. What goes through, I guess my question is, what goes through people's mind when they see a $250 item and they offer 50 bucks? Can you walk into a store and have a $250 item and offer them 50 bucks? What yes. would they do? Well, they'd probably counter offer. You cannot walk into Walmart and say, uh, I will give you, no. Fun fact. <laughs> <laughs> Fun fact. <laughs> One of the rings I bought Teresa when we were early in our marriage. But you didn't do it. I was with my mom and she haggles everywhere. And we were buying a ring at Walmart. I know, we're fancy like that. Why did we buy that one? Is it because I lost mine? Yeah. Okay. So I bought Teresa a new ring. And it wasn't a cheap ring. I mean, it wasn't an expensive ring, but it was from Walmart. It so was like 50 bucks. Yeah. So we went. <laughs> it, wasn't, to it wasn't 50 bucks. So we were at Walmart and I was with my mom at the time and we haggled on the price and we got like... Say, ah, 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 say that right. She haggled on the price because <laughs> I was still a young man and I wasn't confident enough to do it. And at the same time, I was a little bit mortified that she was haggling at Walmart. <laughs> but you can't say you can't because they actually did come down okay. on the price. So let's, let's say it this way. Walmart's, Walmart's a whole nother beast. Let's say you walk into Target. Target is not going to haggle with you on an item. The managers have the ability to discount an item. But they ain't gonna. They can, and they probably would if you asked. We're gonna put this to the test sometime. Are we going to Target? <laughs> We're gonna put this to the test sometime. Like, I need 10% I need off of this. <laughs> We're gonna put it to the test sometime. We're gonna maybe make a video down the Listen, road you can of haggle. Walmart and Target. Here's what I ask myself when we're going into business in different ventures and when we're doing different big buys or big decisions, what's the worst that can happen? That's the question I ask myself. They're going to the tell time. you no. Well, who's that hurt? My feelings. <laughs> <laughs> so RBR. <here's, laughs> so here's my thing. I currently do 25% off as the minimum offer. I think. I just. Mm. <laughs> I want the opportunity to counter. Even if they come in at a dollar. I get that when it comes in, it's, it's a, a $200 lot of work. Item. It is, but it's it's still worth it. So my question is, your two hundred fifty dollar offer or your two hundred fifty dollar item that they came in offered fifty bucks and you countered, did it sell? It didn't. <laughs> the offer expired. The offer expired. Well, you can't win them all. Oh, I don't. I I just don't know. Maybe I will do it going forward <laughs> temporarily, and take it off and see what it does. I struggle with it because I, if I was going to make an offer on this an is, item. This is an internal struggle though. It has nothing to do with the, the customer. Like you can't be mad at somebody for making a low ball offer. I would never do it. Well, so? I, I don't, I, I don't know. Maybe it's a, I don't want to say morals and ethics thing. I, I don't know, but I could not go in. I have made offers on items I purchased on eBay. Oh yeah, we make offers at garage sales all the time. But I don't like go in and say, well, I'm only going to give you five bucks on a $500 item. Like that in my head, that what goes through people's head thinking that they do that and somebody's going to actually accept it? Well, probably they're setting a very low price point to get your mind off the $500 number. Oh, so no, you can that meet somewhere in the middle. That doesn't get me off the $500 price point. No. It, listen, <laughs> if you're dealing with somebody with a severe case of RBR, <laughs> don't lowball because it's not going to work out for you. <laughs> But you can send me a low ball offer. I don't mind, and I will counter. Okay, but but who typically accepts the offer? I know. Dang it. Sorry, guys. Listen, just pay what we ask. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's the debate in a nutshell. 
I, I don't mind getting the low ball offer. I want the ability to get it. So I don't like the, the auto decline because so, but, I want the ability to reply to that offer. But there are some items that you've had on there that you don't want offers on. What's the difference? If it's a very desirable item that I know is going to sell at the price I'm asking, then I don't want an offer on it at all. Because I, it's a rare item. It may be the only one on there. Where else are they going to go get it? They can't make another guy an offer and win that item because I'm the only one with it. That would be the exception to that. Sometimes if I know it's worth it and I'm not going to take an offer, I'll just turn offers off. That, that would probably be the better move. Either leave offers on and wide open or shut offers off if you don't want the offer. What do you I, think? I still struggle. <laughs> I, will, I will do it for one month. I okay. will not what do you put think, offers guys? on it. Have I converted her? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, because now, now I'm going to take those offers off and I'm going to get a dollar offer on a $400 item. And then you're going to have to see the RBR. Well, there's a treatment for RBR. <laughs> What's that? Coffee. I don't drink coffee. Yeah. No. You should start drinking coffee. No, it tastes disgusting. Perks you up and makes you poop. So you're not constipated and you're happy. I'll just stick with my Celsius. <laughs> All right. Enough <laughs> of that. So that's where we stand on offers and we struggle with it daily. So my question to all of you is, one, if you're, if you're a, sole, a sole seller, how do you handle offers? Like if you do it by yourself. Secondly- Does if, anyone else fight with their spouse about offers? That's what, that's what I was just gonna say. If you're a, a couple that sells or a partnership that sells, how do you guys handle it? Also, this is really not that big of a deal. It's just kind of a thing that we go through all the time. We don't argue about it. We disagree. But, but we do disagree about it. Like a lot of times. We agree to disagree. We, <laughs> yeah. We agree to disagree. We do. <laughs> so that's that. What sold next? And we, did it sell on an offer? <laughs> no, it sold for full price. We sold some makeup. Actually, it's not makeup. It's actually called Cosmetics Skin Thirst Moisturizing Hyaluronic, that took me a while to figure out that word. Acid cream. Hyaluronic? Hyaluronic. I don't. <laughs> it's H-Y-A-L-U-R-O-N-I-C. I don't have my, I don't know why I'm looking. I don't have my glasses on. <laughs> Sounds like moronic. I picked up two of this, pro yep. like two of this brand from a garage sale here in town. It's just a small thing too. What is that, like three ounces? Um, It is 2.0. 2.0. So that's a tiny little bottle of... It's brand new, like you open it up and it still has a seal on it. Yep. It sold for $54.99. Free shipping, but mm -hmm. it's only going to cost me five bucks to ship it. Don't overlook cosmetics. No, and I only paid three bucks for it. All right, so what do we got next? We sold some nude Barbies. Well, they're not even Barbies. No, they're not. They're my seam dolls. See that? I'm learning. We sold a Barbie with the blonde hair and a no, Chelsea. It's not a with Barbie. No, oh, her name is Barbie. My scene Barbie. That's so confusing, her guys. Her name is Barbie. I'm so proud of myself for learning, and then I... <laughs> it is what it is. Her name is... It's a my scene. My name is Barbie. Wow. You're <laughs> and so a confusing. my scene. My name is Chelsea Doll. <laughs> I think she's... She's a very confusing one. They, okay. were, they were separate sales, but they're going to the same person. Um, Barbie sold for $17.49, and Chelsea sold for $16.99. Yep. So, not Barbie Barbies. Okay, now up. This one was a shocker. Like, I don't typically, I don't, I don't know how to say this I don't is, typically brag about all of our sales. This is another one where Ebenezer came out and we had to, we had to mm. butt heads on this one not, just a little bit to. I'm Cruella, not Ebenezer. Cruella? <laughs> Are you killing puppies and stuff? No, just deals. Wait, was that Cruella? Yes. Yeah. Just deals. So we got a message out of the blue from somebody the other day um, that had looked at some of our Harley shirts. So if everybody watch, anybody watches and they remember back uh, quite a few videos ago. A couple months ago. We paid $60 for 60 Harley shirts yep. or 60 motorcycle shirts, majority of them being Harley and Sturgis. Yeah, and we've we've made our money on those shirts 10 times over. We're I think when we looked at the sheet, we're just over 600 in profit after fees and shipping and all yep. that. So, and we paid 60 for all of them. Yep. So we're, we're 10X our, our money already. Yep. The shirts are paid for. By a lot. So the gentleman messaged us and he said, I'm interested in your t-shirts. How much for all of your, I count, he says, I counted 15. How much for all of your vintage pre 2000 
Harley shirts. Yep. And we had more than 15. We actually had 31. 31. 31. So it was it was late at night. I think it was like 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night when he was messaging back and forth with me. Yeah, because we were chatting. Like we were laying in bed for part of the... Yep. And the thing is, he like we're trying to decide what number to give him for all of them. And because we're so far in the profit and because we could sell them all at once, because vintage shirts are really good money, but they're also really long tail. Yep. And it clears an entire tote. Of but these shirts. Do you remember what he's doing with them? He's actually opening a store in Iowa somewhere. Yep, somewhere a in Iowa. Vintage shop. Um, so he wanted to know, and I told him, you know, I'll get up the next day. I'll look at them, give you a deal, whatever. So I sent him an offer of seventeen hundred dollars for thirty-one shirts. Yep, which which took like pulling nails to get her to seven because I think we had like twenty-two, twenty-three hundred dollars worth of listings in we those did. shirts, and. Because he was buying them all at one time, I wanted to give him a good discount because he he told us flat out he's buying them for a store. Mm -hmm. He was looking for kind of a wholesale deal. So we wanted to leave some meat on the bone. My hardest piece with it is I had a $250 shirt in there mm -hmm. and a $160 shirt in there and a $108 shirt in there. And I'm just thinking, okay, la, 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 la. Yeah, she's I she's wanted the $250 sale <laughs> of just the one t-shirt. He he actually counter offered at fifteen. Yep, fifteen hundred, and and we accepted that. We had to a after I sent him a list of all the shirts yeah, yep. with the item number so he could go look at it to know exactly what he was getting. Yeah, we made sure he could do his due diligence on all the shirts. We gave him the exact listing numbers, and then once we agreed on the price and he agreed on the list of shirts, we pulled them all down and made a new listing with all thirty-one shirts in it. He did for fifteen hundred dollars, and I think he paid for it within like ten minutes. No, he had a boo boo. He paid for it. He did oh, pay he for did. it originally to, using his personal it. card, and then requested to cancel so that he could use his business card. Yeah. So, but he did pay for it right away. Yep. We did offer free shipping on it because it's just going to Iowa. Yep. And so it's not like it's a huge deal. Now but here's here's the boo boo on that. We took that listing down. All the listings for the thirty one shirts. We put up one listing for fifteen hundred. He bought it within like ten minutes. And eBay charged us marketing fees, promotion fees on it. Yeah, on the relist. F you, eBay. Like, there's no I'm, way that got seen through a promoted listing. We sent him a direct link. I did. I did. So, so I, I might have to reach out to eBay and ask them to oh, refund those care. fees. Because I sent the listing directly to him. Show me where somebody Googled it and he Googled it or whatever, what it, searched for it. That's the wrong kind of promotion. Well, show me where he searched for it. Yeah, it was... It was crappy because we ended up losing like $86 or yeah. something for promotion fees because eBay decided to, to take that out and say it was a promoted click. And yeah, we it were certainly at, was not. We were at $1,300 profit on it. And then when he can I canceled and relisted, then it was down to 12 something. Yep. So we lost like, like $300 almost in fees and promoted listing Not including the shipping and, we've done yet. And the shipping we're going to do. So... We'll make $1,100, give or take. Yeah, still a good deal. It, it's all profit, and our risk is basically the shipping and fee cost. Yep, and we are shipping it via pirate ship. And we are going to request signature. Yep. So, I mean, everything's good. He's even reached out today and asked us when it would ship. We told him it would be out today. <laughs> so, really cool deal. It was. But, I'm kind of sad to see him go, though. Oh, I'm not sad to see oh, inventory go ever. <laughs> I know, but well, these I, were... I take that back. I was sad to see inventory go once. And we'll talk about that coming up. But I do, I do have to say that I was looking forward to selling a 3D emblem shirt by itself. You sold two of them by themselves. No, I sold them as a lot. No, before you sold two of the 3D emblem shirts. Yeah, but the, yeah, but no, this one was a 3D emblem, like actual <laughs> T-shirt, not just the logo. Anyways, All right. so sorry. that's that was our huge sale, and and again, just like the offers, we kind of disagreed on the price, but we did. Talk it out. We figured it out. That's part of... He bullied me. I, I bullied her a little bit. <laughs> he just said, offer him 30%. Yep. We had, to, we had to get to a number and there had to be meat on the bone or he wouldn't buy it. And I really wanted him to buy it. I was kind of excited about it. I did brag about it a little bit in the little group that we have. Because we don't typically... I mean, we sell, you know, 50, sometimes $100 items. But not very often. Usually it's the 10 to 20 to $30 Yeah, it's not item, usually so. that big an item. So Yeah. And she's kind of a bragger. So I wanted to give her something I, to do. 
<laughs> I am not. All right, what sold next? We sold this elf. I didn't even know what these were. They came in our lot of they look like littlest trolls. pet shops that we got. Yep. The $100 yeah, we got like lot. Six or eight of them. Yeah. So this is a 2014, the Zelfs, Dandelion, Lion Zelf. Yep, that's him. And he we sold, sold for good money. Yeah, we sold a couple of these today. I think we have. We sold this one and left. one other one. And they both sold for good money. This Dude. one sold for $19.99. And the Ladybug one that isn't shown. It sold for eighteen ninety nine. Do we have any of these left? I have two. Two left. So I think they're the cheaper ones, the nine ninety nine ones. So maybe I'll just think about dropping it down and putting up a new listing with both of them in it. Zelfs. Who knew? Okay. So also in a pre we seem to be talking about a lot of previous videos today. Well, go back and watch all of our videos <laughs> if you haven't already. So we bought a lot of patches, all kinds of patches awesome. from Shop, Shop Commons. Commons. Yep. We have done fabulous. We're way in the profit on it. That's kind of the, it's the perfect example of the spirit of that platform yes. is to sell wholesale to wholesale for resellers. Yep. Or reseller to reseller wholesale. Yes. And and this patch, or this patch lot was a great example of that. Yep. And this wasn't a, I mean, it's not a high dollar one. Um, it was listed at $9.99. I took an offer for $9.49. Oh, how dare you. <laughs> Shut up. It was 5%. <laughs> So the, that's the patch right there. It was a but, little shell patch. Yep. Um, it doesn't say when. Shell oil, shell gasoline oil embroidered small sew-on patch. Most of them that we got are sew-on. They're not the iron-on. Yep. There's a vintage sew-on one. Yep. Um, we only pay, like if they order an individual patch like this, we only pay 69 cents for shipping because we ship it uh, eBay standard envelope. Yep. So. So, yay, another patch out the door. It is. I'm excited. All right, so the, the thing that I sold that I regretted, one of the few things I've ever sold that I regretted was this guy right here. This, you can grab one there. Well, you can't see that very well. Here. So the Dungeons & Dragons popcorn head. We got a couple of these early on, and they, there was a frenzy for them. People were buying them for crazy prices. Can I make a comment? Sure. So he opens like this. Like that is not much room to get your hand to eat popcorn out of. That's not the of. point. Give me my dragon. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> so I really liked that thing and I wanted to keep one, but they were selling for like 150 bucks at the time. I, I couldn't make myself keep it. So we, I, we listed, we listed one really high. Yep. For like 225 bucks and it sold for and 225 I, bucks. Yeah. And I thought it would sit on my shelf forever <laughs> and never sell. And it did sell. So I had to ship it. This one will not be listed. So our local movie theater listed that they had a whole bunch of stock inventory that they had bought for previous movies and they were trying to make room for new stuff um, that's coming in and just clear out space. Yeah, we were actually in town at the post office when the Facebook post came through <laughs> from the theater. He was buying them sitting out front of the post office. I was. I had everything that we wanted pretty much bought up a yep. couple minutes after they made the post. And yeah. then we just had to go get it. Two well, of two them Two of the bought. three, yep. So we went to a movie theater. We bought three different lots of things. Here, we'll show you. So we bought four of those dragon heads. Yep, There's the three all, we're selling. Three are selling, one is not. Then up above, we have the Minion, they're cups. So they yep. come with a straw. They're all brand new sealed. Yep. And then we also have the turtle, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Slimer Bucket that we have four of for sale as well. So the lesson behind this is when a fancy movie comes out, like a not fancy a fancy movie, movie <laughs> uh, a top hit movie, I think. Most, I think any big pop culture yeah. type movie that comes out, they often have the the different popcorn bucket. Different yep. theaters get different ones. Yep. Like there's there's the, the tin version of the, the turtle ones, like the metal buckets. Yep. Those don't sell that great. No. They're not and expensive. I, I think those are some of the bigger movie theaters are who get the like the the tin ones because they're easier for them to store because they get yep. them in mass quantities. And some of the smaller theaters and stuff are the ones that get like the fancy. Yeah. The and fancy I think they ones. get to pick what they order. But they the, do. I think the point is like we never considered picking the movie theater. No. <laughs> We did. But they all have a back room of promotional stuff, rather it be posters or popcorn buckets or, or collector cups or... I should reach out to her and ask her what she does with her movie theater posters. Yeah. 
So, and, and they usually have to get rid of them at some point. So it wouldn't hurt to call your local theaters and just ask, hey, do you have a back stock room full of movie stuff that, that you'd be willing to let us pick through? Yeah, and, and... And go pick the theater because we, I mean, we paid half, a, a little, probably a little over half price what we would have paid for if we bought them at the yep. theater at the time. Yep. But we comped all of them. We know the, the Dragon Heads are still selling for like $100. Yeah, the, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle things, I think those are mm -hmm. listed for about 50 yep. Don't quote me on it. I think it's somewhere in there, 40 or 50 And um, same with the Minions. The Minions cups. are listed at about 45 bucks. Yep. So we're going to do really well on that. And that there's, I mean, it's just something we had never considered picking before was the movie theater. We have sold that stuff before. Yes, and we've sold the things from McDonald's. But we never considered actually asking them, no. hey, do you have a back room full of stuff? So watch when the movies come out. Mm -hmm. Like, currently they have stuff that is up for... What movie is coming out that they just listed the stuff for? Beetlejuice. Yes. Um, so, you know, we don't go to the movies all that often just because here in the town we live in, most of the movies are Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Well, we work Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Thursday we source, and Wednesday we're busy listing. Yep. So we don't get a chance to go to the movies. So we always... And you gotta. You also have to be careful when you're picking... Like, you don't want to go buy out their inventory because yeah. it's hot right now and then get stuck with 100 of them. Yes. Like, because it is... They're like the McDonald's cups or the McDonald's figures, the Grimace ones and stuff from... Mm -hmm. You know, they'll, they'll burn out. The trend will die fairly quickly. But if you could catch it at the right time, you can do really well. Some of the stuff, like the Dungeons & Dragons had... I mean, that's been like a year. Yeah, and, and well, selling... I'm okay with sitting on them, like, yep. because somebody's going to come out and buy them. Yep, and they're still selling well. And I think it's because they were such a limited run. Mm -hmm. And it's got a much wider audience than just the fans of the movie. So there's, there's Dungeons & Dragons geeks all over the world looking for those buckets. Now I got mine. Yeah, they had they had a lot. Like they had cups, they had other popcorn tins. Like they had the the popcorn bowl from Ghostbusters. Yep. That was the stay puffed. I always thought it was a stay puff. It's not puff. It's He's puffed. puffed. P u f t. Past tense. He's been puffed. Um, Marshmallow Man. His popcorn bucket. But we comped everything they had, and they didn't sell well. Nothing else was really selling well, or they had them listed high. So, when sourcing, check the unusual places. <laughs> <laughs> like your movie theater. Yeah, yeah. What'd you think I was meaning? Uh, all right, so let's look at what sold next. So, speaking of minions, we did sell one of our minions. It is a Despicable Me 4 Super Minions Souvenir Movie Theater Collectible Cup with straw, brand new sealed. Yep. He's that in. one does have a, a little hole in little him, hole. though. But that's okay. That's all right. He's all in there. So we'll get him packed up. What did he sell for? $44.99 full price. See? That's one of seven that went out. Or one of seven that sold. All right. So now we got a Bonanza sale. We do. We had two Bonanza sales over the weekend. We did. But before we talk about it, I have to make a comment. Okay. Make a comment. In one of the groups, somebody was asking, they were looking to branch out and they were looking to branch out to Bonanza. And they wanted to know if it was worth That's it. That's not really branching out. No, it's not. I mean, it is, but it isn't. It's so, so somebody not. else told them, oh, this is such a worthless platform. It, it, um, it, it's way too complicated. It takes too much time. Okay, here's how I see Bonanza. Bonanza is an eBay extension. Yes. You literally sign up for an account and, and click a button to import your inventory and then you never even log into Bonanza again. Other than to ship. Unless you sell something, they'll send you an email. Yep. So, like, there's, it's the perfect add-on to eBay because yes. it just puts all your items in one more store, but it's not cross-listing. You don't have to do anything. Mm -mm. Once it's set up, it just syncs. Yep. And even once, for sale. Once it sells, it's nice because you don't have to have a cross-listing app or anything like that. Once it sells. How was that again? Yeah, it just delists. It delists on your eBay app. Yeah, it's it's that's what I mean. It's not really a separate app. Like, it's not really cross-listing. It's literally a does, button my that question, synced to everything, and then you forget about it. My question is, how does a crappy platform like Bonanza do this? But Mercari, Poshmark, what else is there? Depop. Yeah, well, how do they not know how to do it without having an app? Well, they got Hoss. They got what? Hoss. What the hell is that? From Bonanza. 
Oh. <laughs> the movie show. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've seen that show. Oh, wow. But I, I, I don't get it. Like, some, everybody says Bonanza is a crappy platform. Nobody shops on it a whole lot. But how does Bonanza do it, but these other bigger platforms haven't figured out how to do it without cross-listing? And I know Mercari's tried, but it, nobody has luck with it. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Bonanza's just ahead of their time, I guess. Okay. And now, don't, don't think that you're going to sink your store to Bonanza and then you're going to get a flood of Bonanza sales. Oh. But we get a two, three, four a month, maybe. Yep, we do. So... Why not have the extra the extra eyes? Yep. We don't mind it. And the fees are cheaper than eBay. And they actually let you, when you're setting your store up, they say, okay, your fees are this much less than eBay. Would you like to take that extra amount and put it into the promotion fees? So you can promote it with what it would cost you. That way, when you do sell it, even if you're promoting, it's going to cost you the same fees as eBay. Yep. And you don't have to do that, but we do that. I think we, we pay 2% less fees on Bonanza because the extra 6% we put into promotions or something like that. I don't know. But I didn't set it up. Why would you not do it? Like I said, it's it's basically like turning on an extension that says, yes, show these on another store too. Yep. So we sold a Becca, a, a Becca, Bika, a Becca, a Becca, a Bika. A Bika. Arithmetic 1 work, work text and test speed skill, speed drill key. The teacher's key. Yep. That's what sold on Bonanza. It did. It sold for $24.18. Yep. And we sold a $33 book on there last um, week. We did. Oh, we did. Mm -hmm. 35 Something I like think. that. So, yes. And the other thing we sold this week from Bonanza was a Littlest Pet Shop house. The littlest, the biggest Littlest Pet Shop. Yep. So, yay Bonanza extension. So, if you're worried about it and you want to try it, it takes like, I, I didn't set it up, so I'm just guessing. It takes like 10, 15 minutes to uh, set up and then it, you're done. It might have taken me 15, 20 minutes to get it all figured out. Because yep. it's, it's a little kludgy when you're setting it up, but it really is not a big deal. It's fairly intuitive. It's not that big of a deal to set up. I just don't, like I said, it's, it's not something that's going to turn on a flood of sales to your store, but it's something that'll trickle in a few a month and it takes zero effort. Yep. So I don't, I don't understand the resistance to Bonanza. If you've had trouble with Bonanza, I have heard some people say they've had trouble with Bonanza. What trouble? That would be a different story. Like if we were having hassle from Bonanza. Yeah, or they I were, would take it off. It, we would just shut it off because it doesn't give that many more sales. But it's enough It's enough for us. Well, the $30 today was enough for us to to have it on. It makes it worth the effort that we didn't put into it. It does. <laughs> like, I it didn't, didn't do, do nothing. Anything. Like he did it initially. Bonanza does the rest of it. Yep. And then I ship it and we're done. Sounds like we're really promoting Bonanza. But we're not being paid by Bonanza. Although, Bonanza, we're open to the option. Call us. <laughs> we'll promote you. <laughs> Was that it for today? That is it. That's it. Okay. We're going to go pack and see if we could do that without any disagreements. We have disagreements packing. Yep. yep. <laughs> we, we actually do. We'll talk about those later. <laughs> so that's it for today. We'll see you guys next time. Hasta la vista, baby.